I am going to unbox the Canon Vixia Mini X. There's been this new brand style of camcorder out there now that are designed for musicians and bands, uh, just regular people vlogging who record themselves and put them on social media sites like YouTube. Other cameras that are like this are the Zoom Q4 handy video recorder, the Sony MV1, both of those are $300, and the first model of the first generation of the Canon Mini, which is just the Mini without the X. These are different kinds of cameras than the action cams. Action cams are like the GoPro cameras, the cameras that are designed to be rough with. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the Mini X and professional features that videographers and independent filmmakers might find very useful. I'm also gonna talk about some of the flaws in this camera that make it good for video professionals, but at the same time, really not good for video professionals. And if you don't wanna watch the rest of this video, uh, the tragic flaw is the exposure, the manual exposure controls. Let's take a quick tour of the camera before I talk about the features inside. On this side, you really only have two buttons, uh, the record button and a playback button. The playback button switch, switches you into playback mode, and in the playback mode, you, that's where you can look at all the pictures that you've, or video that you've taken, and you can play it back by with the touch screen interface at the top. This also, if you hold it down, turns on the camera in playback mode. You have your USB and HDMI. USB doesn't connect to the computer to stream it. It doesn't become a webcam like that. It becomes a webcam using the Wi-Fi. The USB is just to dump your footage instead of, if you don't have an SD card slot on your computer, you can just plug this into your computer and then it reads the SD card. This is where the battery and the SD card are held. Battery supposedly runs the camera on in HD mode for about 150 minutes. On this side, you have a mic volume control, a DCN, which is the what powers the camera with a co proprietary connection, which kind of sucks. And it also charges the battery. Next, you have a headphone and a mic input. You have a tripod mount and stand here where you can place it on your desk. And when you move the articulating screen right here, you can point it at yourself and do cool selfie videos. The lens cap is built in. Here's your screen, which is also a touchscreen interface. The menu system is very similar to these cameras. If you have a G10, an XA10, any of these kind of Vixia camcorders, their menu systems are all the same. The audio controls are presets, generally presets, that you can preset it to, if you're in a live band room that's really loud, you can low, have a low cut filter, you can add some wind filters on it, and suppress the sound and just get good quality audio without clipping. The Canons that I've noticed have similar, something about the tech, the colors that they, they match, they cut well together. So one of the things that I was thinking about doing was attaching this camera right on top of the hot shoe of my HFG30. And when I'm recording events sometimes, I want two camera angles. And here I have two cameras, one a wide shot, and one anything else I want. This has two uh, codecs that it shoots to, it, AVCHD and MP4. Same thing with this one. Uh, the AVCHD only shoots to 60i interlaced, uh, which is 29.97, uh, but interlaced, that's, I don't know why it shoots that. The MP4 mode is 24 megabits at 30p and 24p, which is the exact same codec as this one. I'm not sure if it will give you the same quality of footage. It shouldn't because this is a, over a thousand, this is 400. But on paper, it seems very similar that it would cut together. The lens on this camera, if you're shooting AVC HD, it's a 17.5 millimeter lens. If you're shooting MP4, it's a 16.8 millimeter lens. So it's a wider angle view. It also has this close up mode that if you punch right here, it turns a 16.8 millimeter into a 35 millimeter lens. It has embedded timecode, so if you want to have multiple cameras and sync it with timecode, this can do that. And it also has linear PCM audio, except the audio and the uh, timecode is only in the AVC HD mode, not in, in MP4 mode, which is very odd because the AVC HD with 60i is the one uh, frame rate you would not shoot professionally. This HDMI is actually uncompressed. There we go. As you can see, there's no marks at all uh, on, in the output. It's clean HDMI. The Wi-Fi connects to your smartphone or your tablet or your computer and it streams the video. Here's where you can use this camera as a live streaming device. 
it doesn't have the highest bit rate, but it can stream live using an app, the Canon app. And it can also, after you shoot, you can transfer footage via Wi-Fi. This shoots slow motion and fast motion in camera uh, at standard definition and or really low quality, but it can do that. And it has interval recording, that's time lapse. So you can, I think it's five, 10, 30, 60 second intervals. I'm gonna go switch to manual audio. Once you're in manual audio, I'm gonna go back. You can control the audio, see there's a 50. Right here, you can dial the audio levels. So I'm right now dialing it down. I can control the audio levels as I'm recording. Sometimes you want to record two sources of audio. If I'm doing an interview, for example, and I want to mic the interview subject, but I also want to hear my own voice in the camera mic, you can record to the internal mics and the external mic on two separate channels at the same time. You have a setting called Audio Mix, which I have not seen on any of these other Canon Fixia cameras before. I'm gonna talk into this mic. You can see on the bottom where it's really hot, uh, that's the mic lav I'm, mic I'm talking into. And then the top level is this mic. That is something that I've been wanting in a camera for the longest time with just that 3.5 millimeter jack. It's a feature that you would think were, would be on a thousand, two thousand dollar camcorders, but it's not. You're almost forced to hold it like this, palm, palm up. And I think it's quite brilliant to do it like that because in other cameras that you would have, traditionally, you hold it like this and you're holding it vertically. And even if you had those old flip cameras or your phone even, you would hold it like up, hold it like that, or you would hold it portrait mode. Your wrist moves a lot. You, there's a lot of axes to move on and to screw up your footage, make it look all shaky. You are better balanced holding the camera like this than you are like that. You're still handheld and it's still gonna be shaky, but you're at an advantage just by nature of holding it like this, like a waiter holds a, a drink, a tray, of, a tray of drinks. There's no image stabilization in this wide angle mode, but when you punch into the 35 millimeter mode, uh, you can see that hand right there. That means image stabilization. So when you're, you're punched in and you still wanna go handheld, it's gonna compensate for the movement. So I've said a lot of great things about this camera, but one of the things that is killing me, and maybe there's a way around it. Maybe there will be a firmware update that fixes this, but right now, you cannot control manually control the exposure and know what your f-stop and shutter speed are. And here's how you lock the exposure. You press the manual exposure and then you can dial down. But the problem here is you don't know what your f-stop and your shutter speed are. You can lock the exposure, but you don't know what it is. I'm gonna shoot some test footage of this camera and, and post it on in future videos. But the last thing I'll do is do very quickly compare this footage to footage of other cameras that people may be using right now. I'll compare it to a GoPro 3, a Canon S120, iPhone 5, a Canon HFG30. I'll shoot them all 1080, 30p, and I'll just show you very quick clips of it just to compare uh, right now. If anyone has any questions, uh, I might be able to answer it if you're curious about this camera. If you're a musician and you want to record yourself, put it on YouTube. Or if you're a reporter in the field, I think this camera is an excellent choice to buy for that. And if you're a professional videographer or if you're an independent filmmaker, everything I've just reviewed, I don't know if you, if you like those kind of features, if you need those kind of features, if you think they can be useful to you and you have $400 to spare, plus maybe $50 for another battery, I would invest in this. I got this camera, I really like it so far. I've only had it for a day, but I think I'll like it for at least a year till the next model comes out. There we go.